Many coffee drinkers want that instant stimulation that caffeine delivers without the associated jitters and sleeplessness and anxiety, says Rarebird. The solution? Replace caffeine with one of its metabolites called paroxanthine, or PX for short, so you can enjoy that cup of morning, Joe, without the nasty side effects. There are two main issues with caffeine that we're trying to address. One is that caffeine is metabolized very slowly by the body, so it sticks around for a very long time and can negatively affect sleep quality. We make a caffeine replacement PX that has a shorter half-life than caffeine, so it's removed from the body faster, you can get better quality sleep at night. The second issue with caffeine is that it can trigger the body's anxiety or fight and flight response for many people. That's the wired, jittery, stressed out feeling that people get from a cup of coffee. PX has a second benefit that doesn't have that negative side effect, so you're not going to ever feel overly amped up uh, like caffeine will make people. So PX is actually a metabolite of caffeine, so when we consume a regular cup of coffee, we'll kind of get to PX, but just not immediately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. good question. So PX is short for parazanthine, but mm. no one's ever heard of it before, mm. but people are way more familiar with it than they think. Yeah. That's because about 80% of the caffeine that we consume mm -hmm. is metabolized by enzymes in our liver, the PX. Mm -hmm. The issue, as you put it, is that it's a very, very slow process. Right. right so mm -hmm. it takes almost the entire day mm -hmm. for the body to convert that caffeine to PX. Everything you feel from a traditional cup of coffee, 100% the caffeine. Mm -hmm. So what if you just switch to decaf, you know, uh, what's the problem there or does that not really deliver what people are looking for? Yeah, yeah, so decaf essentially is the absence of yes. any stimulant. There's no caffeine in there, a very de minimis amount of caffeine. Mm -hmm. So PX is really a caffeine replacement. Yeah. So it's still designed to give you the alertness, the awakefulness that you want from a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So are you actually manufacturing your own PX or are you sourcing it uh, from elsewhere? And then, you know, what is your IP around? Yeah, so on the manufacturing side, yeah. we work with a third-party supplier of PX. Yeah. Um, can't really go into much more detail sure. than that today. Uh, but on the IP side, we have a patent on the ground PX coffee, so the mm. actual product people brew at home. Yes. We also have patents pending on a green PX coffee bean. That's the unroasted PX coffee okay. bean. Mm -hmm. And as you think about the long-term vision here, yeah. we want to make a coffee that you can find in any Starbucks, Pete's, Caribou yes. Coffee, whatever your favorite brand is. Mm -hmm. right, so we really want to tap into that supply chain mm -hmm. that's existing already. Mm -hmm. And so that's really where this IP is being directed, yeah. is how do we become the PX coffee company, yes. but then also be able to supply the world. Right, so we're starting direct to consumer and online sales. And the reason we're doing that is because it's the easiest way to get this product into as many people's hands and in front of as many people's eyeballs as possible. Mm -hmm. And the digital platform and world is also a very convenient and easy way to educate the consumer mm -hmm. about PX Coffee's benefits over caffeine. 2022, we received grass or generally recognized as safe allowance for PX. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the human health and safety you know, set of studies one needs to go through before you can bring a new so ingredient to market. Self grass, self from grass, yes. correct. Yeah. Uh, and that allowed us to then start selling into the U.S. market mm -hmm. uh, at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So last year we did a soft launch, just mm -hmm. got the coffee out in the people's hands, got mm -hmm. feedback, tremendous response. You know, you're seeing something like 30, 40, 45 percent of people, coffee drinkers, respond much more positively to PX coffee than traditional coffee. And so this year is all about growth. Right, just getting it out to more people, that's the biggest challenge is you know, consumer awareness and education. I mean, how do you talk to consumers about it? Yeah, I think it really needs to be boiled and distilled down to the most sim simple elements yes. and benefits. Right? This is a coffee where you're going to feel better during the day and you're going to sleep better at night. You know, we can get into all the science, the sure. neurochemistry, the biology of why it works that way. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, that's what the consumer really wants to know and what they care about is how is this going to feel? And is this coffee and does it taste like coffee? You know, and the answer is yes. Like we didn't change anything else about the experience, just the active ingredient. Um, there's a lot of published studies in the literature showing that PX is anxiolytic, meaning anxiety decreasing whereas caffeine is the opposite. It amplifies and increases feelings of stress and anxiety. I think that's a really interesting avenue. Thinking about sleep quality, doing clinical studies there, there's a whole bunch of places we can take this. So it's still very much early days. Uh, so one of the interesting things about this product from a funding perspective is it's very, very easy to talk about. Everyone knows coffee, right? It's instantaneously you get it. Uh, obviously, from an IP perspective, 
we're carving out a space for ourselves that's very different than a traditional CPG product, which lends itself very much to a venture financing model. So I think one of the interesting things we're seeing now is that PX coffee drinkers are coming to us and asking to invest. And that's actually very exciting, right? Because those are the people that you want to be bought into the company are the ones who are experiencing the direct benefits of the product. Do you have a clear sense of what the correct kind of dose is? Um, yeah, so in terms of potency, yeah. you know, caffeine and PX are very comparable. Um, I will say that people have, there's a spectrum in terms of sensitivity, right? So if you're someone who can drink eight cups of caffeinated coffee and you have no issues, right, PX is probably going to feel more like decaf to you. Uh, but for those folks who are more sensitive to caffeine, right, they describe this as a cleaner, you know, more refined feeling than caffeine is. Um, but generally speaking, potency, they're roughly equivalent for the average person. As to usage occasions, I mean, do you see that there's a kind of particular target, target consumer for you, or is it more just about different usage occasions? So maybe someone would have caffeinated coffee in the morning, but maybe PX coffee in the afternoon, or, you know, how do you see the audience? Yeah, so I think maybe where I'll start with is, you know, caffeine is the most widely consumed drug in the face of the earth, right? And coffee is the second most consumed beverage behind water in the US. Right? And so we were very intentional about starting with coffee because it best aligned with, at least in my opinion, the benefits of PX and the coffee consumer. Right? We're talking about increasing performance, increasing mental wellness, getting a, the right start to your day. Right? Energy drinks, sodas, very, very different kind of use case and feel. When we start to think about within coffee, what are the different use cases? You know, this is a coffee that everyone you know, should be considering as an afternoon cup, right? Because it does have that benefit that's more universal in terms of quicker clearance from the body. But really the target consumer is the one that has that negative association or feeling with caffeine. That's really where they're gonna see the biggest delta in effect and biggest you know, positive experience with PX coffee.